You're welcome to Flow Kids Day. My name is Afolake and I'm so excited to have you join me on today's vlog. At least you entered my corner today. How excited I am and I'm so glad that you could join. Thank you so much. And to my new subscribers, if you're seeing me for the very first time, my name is Afolake. You have not missed anything. This is Flow Kids Day. Glad to have you join me so that you can always follow through all the videos that I post. I will encourage you to follow me hit that subscribe button and then turn on the notification bell so you get to see when I post a new video which I do every week so you don't miss out on any of those that I post so I'm excited that you have joined me and here in Canada I'm filming from Saskatchewan in Saskatoon it's officially spring and we are excited that we can have some outdoor times it's been so cold even though spring too is still cold though if you are coming from the tropics but at least we are getting used to it and we are excited about spring so we can have um, some quality outdoor times the snow is melting the water in fact if you move around the streets you will see that everywhere is you know ice melting and then everywhere is flooded as if it rained it didn't rain or is it melt from this the snow that is melting so we are excited and our weather has been really good, jolly good you know from the zero to the minus three to the plus three and we are really feeling that you know that vibe coming near us in the spring stroke the summer so you're welcome um is the tax season and i think it's a good time for us to also talk about how to file our tax right and how we can reduce our bills or our tax bills when we file so i'm going to be breaking down um taxes as he works here in canada and go over some of the basics of the different tax brackets that exist and then we compare some things how about that so if it's what you're looking forward to hearing do stick around go nowhere see you soon So welcome back again my tribe and let's talk taxes like i mentioned so here in canada we're in the tax season and irs which is the internal revenue service accepts electronic taxes from february 21 2022 it could differ year in year out but this year 2022 is february 21st and your returns will be considered filed by cre that's the canada revenue agency when it's received electronically or is being processed by the, any Canadian financial institution on or before May 2nd. There's always a cut off time. So the deadline for filing our 2021 tax in 2022 will be April 30th, which falls on a Saturday. And of course, when you send it, it must be received as at May 2nd. So that's the deadline. Any day after that day, you'll begin to accrue interest. So you'll be owing government money. Interest will be charged. So to be for one is to be for arms. Always um, try and file your taxes early enough. Within um, mid-January to February and around March, every institution starts sending you your T4A, T4E, whether it's for academics, for work. If you have changed up 10 times, they will send it to you at different points. And sometimes on their portal, you can actually print. So it's important for you to take note of all of this so you don't miss out on those deadlines. Try and put all your documents together. Even if you have um, zero returns, even if you have no income, you must, as a Canadian citizen, file your tax every year. For those that are married or have common law partners and are self-employed, they have until June 15th to file their taxes. June 15th, 2022, to file their taxes. So there's an exception for those kind of people. So let's talk about the different types of taxes that we pay we pay in canada um there's a personal tax there's a business tax and there's the investment tax and you can reduce your tax legally that's the one thing i want you to take note of it's possible for you to reduce your tax legally not the one that they will come and be knocking on your door behind you but you can't even run because if you cheat the government they will come back for you and then you'll be paying heavily plus interest so don't try to do that um, in any way, in a dubious way, but you can do that legally. And that's what I want to share with you here. Tax deductions can be legally reduced. We have personal tax, we have business tax, we have investment tax. But I'm talking about legally reducing your tax. So if you want to reduce your tax, it can be done legally through deductions, credits, 
and your registered account and those registered accounts consist of your tfsa that's a tax-free savings account and your rrsp which is your retirement which is your registered retirement savings plan and so in canada we pay two types of income taxes and um, we pay to the federal government and we pay to the provincial federal is canada wide Provincial is talking about Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, you are in BC, you are in Quebec. Those are provincial taxes. For federal taxes, they are the same because it's Canada wide. They are the same for all Canadians. Whereas in the provincial taxes, it depends on your province. So your province determines how much tax. And it also determines depends on like in Saskatchewan now we have minimum wage is small so our profit, our taxes are lower than the bigger cities like Quebec which I think has the highest um, provincial tax rate Ontario those are bigger cities their taxes are higher they have um, higher minimum wages so you can understand they can't charge us more although some of us still pay like um, almost the same thing with other provinces but anyway, it depends on the province. So if you if you are in all the cities that I've mentioned, you earn like a 60 grand annual uh, income, your federal taxes are going to be the same. Whether you're in Saskatchewan, you're in Manitoba, you're in BC, you're in Ontario, you're in Quebec, it's going to be the same. No preferences to these um, provinces, just what pops in my head. Um, however, your provincial will differ on the same pay so if you're earning 60,000 grand what you pay in Saskatchewan like I've earlier mentioned will be lower than what you pay in Quebec or what you pay in Ontario also note that your tax rate increases as your income increases so if you are praying and you're asking God God please increase me enlarge me you're asking for more tax See? <laughs> so bottom line is as you earn more you pay more to the government Government is our money, and that's why they have said we should come and work. So we are here to also butter the bread of Canada. So as you are working, as you increase your pay or your income increases, or you get promoted or you change jobs, you have more income, the better for Canada, right? Because they also know that income will increase. So um, like I talked about the tax bracket, I'm going to put it up here for you to be able to see what the tax bracket is and what the percentages are that you pay per the tax bracket so for the first tax bracket i'm using the 2021 for your tax filing for 2022 rates if you earn 49,020 and below you are in the first tax bracket and then your tax your tax rate will be 15 percent but if you earn more than that which is 49,000 to about 98,000 you are in the second bracket and your tax is 20.5%. So for you to pay your tax, you are not paying a 20.5% flat rate. The first 49,020 will be taken out of the 15%. And then the next, you know, extra of the cash will be taken from the 20%. So there comes at the end of the day what we call a marginal rate. And that's what you eventually will use to calculate your tax rate. Because your tax rate doesn't fall in one single bracket except you earn less than 49,020. So if you earn a hundred thousand, for instance, you're going to be your first tax bracket of 49,000 will be taken from the 15% um, tax rate. Then you move to the next tax bracket that cuts off at 98,000. You move to the next tax bracket that cuts off at 98,040, and then you'll be charged. 20.5% on the next tax bracket from um, your pay. And that's why we use the marginal tax um, rate to calculate our, it's like an average of what your tax will be that you pay in federal taxes. Also know that the amounts in the tax bracket are adjusted yearly due to inflation or other factors. Like the one for 2020, 2020 tax rate for you to file in 2021 was slightly lower and then you know beyond the percentages have been the same that's 15 percent um 20.5 percent 16 percent 19 percent and 33 percent has been the same but you know when we talk about the marginal adjustment due to inflation and other things it's um the band earlier it was not up to 49,020 
and below. Uh, currently, we're using that value. So it's just a marginal difference. And you, you, you just need to understand where you just need to understand where your um, salary falls within the bracket and then the tax will be calculated. There's always an online calculator that we use to calculate these things and then you'll be able to get a marginal rate. And of course, after the federal has deducted and the province has deducted, you can have like an average deductible which tells you this is how much percentage on an average that has been deducted from my pay. One thing I also want you to note is that when you work Full time. I know when you move to a country, you want to get a full time job. It makes more sense than having part time jobs. You know, some benefits don't accrue to part time jobs um, workers, or you're running two jobs whereby you don't have um, full availability of the things that will help you, maybe for insurance, health insurance, and some other benefits that you need um, within the company will not be given to you because you're a casual worker or you're a temporary worker. Full-time work is good. At least your mind will be at rest that you're in one place. Not like you're after work, you're running to another job. But the flip side of it is that if you're a full-time worker, you're taxed heavily more than other forms of um, income owners in Canada. And that's why it's very important that you must look towards investment. When you invest in Canada, your tax rate is lower and then there's opportunity for you to also um, take up some costs, normal costs that you also incur. Because you're running a business, you net it off from your expense and then your eventual tax rate drops. I will give you more insight into that. Tax credits, tax credit benefits everyone regardless of the income you earn but it reduces the amount of taxes you owe by a fixed amount so that's it it reduces whatever you owe until they start netting of you know all these tax credits um you will be owing the government so but it's just on a fixed amount whereas um tax deductions reduces your taxable income and so reduces the amount you owe based on your marginal rates tax rate you know we've explained the marginal tax rate which is an average of your tax in one bracket falling into the other you find an average and that helps you to determine your marginal tax rate so when you earn more there's uh, more benefits to you using your tax deductions for business and investment income um, they are taxed way less and why that's why we encourage that people should um, try to have a side income have a side business and this will help you to reduce your taxes you can avoid paying taxes on investment income by using what they call the tax sheltered accounts and these are the tfsa like i mentioned and the rrsp that's your tax free savings account and your retirement registered savings account so one thing I want you to also note is that an increase in paycheck does not guarantee that all the whole money is yours. Meaning that if you were earning $60,000 and you got another job that pays you $70,000 and or you probably got a promotion or you know something happens, you shall have like a $10,000 extra. It doesn't mean automatically that money, whole money enters your pocket in your bank account. No. Invariably, you have to consider that against all your deductions because you might of course looking at your tax bracket from the first tax bracket cutting off from the 49,020 that you will be taxed on from the 15 percent then it moves into the next tax bracket which you will still fall into but now you have more income and then of course government has more money as well when you start hunting for jobs some people just look at you and say what are you looking for some people just feel that look i'm content in my first bracket that's less than 49,000 some people fall into the 90,000 range and of course splitting into the two tax brackets so if you're earning like 90k you might not you, your net income might not be more than like 60k so do the calculation guys in fact I have one paper that I did the calculation I was like what confidence come here they take like almost 30 percent or so that's what you pay and that's what goes to the government tax credits can fall under refundable and non-refundable for the refundable tax credits you can use it to reduce your tax amount 
that you're owing the government to is zero. And then whatever left, whatever is left out of it will be paid back to you in um, tax refund. And that's what um, people receive when they file their taxes and they have um, they are not owing the government after they've net off, you know, all of those deductions, and then they send them a pay a check or you know they send it to their bank account. However, for the non-refundable, it reduces your tax amount but to zero, and then whatever is left, at, at least you are not owing the government, is not paid back to you. What is exciting is that Canada always focuses on low income earners, um, and that's why this tax credits. Is also beneficial to low-income earners and um, you know for I know when you're new to Canada you have so many benefits that you enjoy from the government you have health care you have child support you have um, education benefits you have some people even get um, accommodation at a very low cost all of these things depends on your income so if you fall under the low-income earner you get so much support and as you are increasing in income and your your income goes up, you start losing those benefits because they are targeted at low income earners. The tax credits are targeted at low income earners and other categories of people here in Canada. Other tax credits that are available to every other person will be the personal um, tax credits, tuition reimbursement, um, the GST, HST credits, um, if you're a first-time home buyer, you receive that as well. Your medical expenses and other donations as well. Those are those will form part of your um, tax credits as well that are available to everybody. Whatever amount you contribute in your IRSP, that's your Registered Retirement Savings Program, it serves like a sheltered account, tax sheltered account for you. And um, this account reduces your taxable income significantly by the amount that you contribute. And that amount is not taxed until retirement. You know, it's towards your retirement. And of course, if you're um, retiring at age 70, your income has gone low, maybe back to, you know, the first um, bracket, then you'll be taxed based on that amount when you decide to withdraw that um, money from that account. For business owners, we've said it's important for everyone to think, you know, investment or think that you want to have a side business because it helps you, you know, make other claims. And that's what I'll be talking about. And so for business owners, you can claim business expenses. If you work from home, you do your business online, or you even you could be in a catering business or you could be doing all your business from home maybe you're an IT person and you have you're using your electricity you're using your phone you're using your heating because you have to be warm you're using um, what else do you use your you know basic things at home you can claim those expenses even your rent or whatever it is, maybe your mortgage interest, if you have mortgage, you can claim those expenses by a percentage of the, that shared space. If you earn 90000 and you're a business owner, and you also earn 90000 as a full-time employee, as a full-time employee, your, your tax deduction or against your marginal tax rate will be almost about 30% or thereabouts. So you're paying... You're having a net income of your 60000 that you take home. And same applies to the business owner, right? But because the business owner can claim home expenses, even legal fees, so a percentage of that goes back to you. So it reduces your tax. And if you have that in, even if it's 15% of your cost, then you will be going home with way more net income than someone that is a full-time employee. So that's a way to reduce your tax. And that's why it's encouraged that people have side businesses, start building it up. It will grow one day, and then you'll be able to claim business expenses and then reduce your tax rate. So guys, if this has been helpful to one or two of you, um, feel free to like and share this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new to my channel. Encourage me and um, I'll give you more content that will help you in your journey towards Canada. There's so much going on here in Canada and there's so much to share. So 
I would also want feedback from you, whatever um, you want me to share. I know so many of you have sent me DMs on my Instagram handle. Feel free to follow me on my Instagram handle as well. I will definitely respond to your messages um, when I have enough time to do that. But I will respond to your messages. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. It's been so much fun sharing with you. Do have a wonderful day and enjoy the beautiful weather for my Canadian people. See you in another vlog.